really, Tom. Someone obviously knows me. Sir, I have been trying to Sir! Try me. I have been trying to help me! I advise to you, back the up, or I'm taking it to the gun. I don't care about that. <laughs> try me. I'm scared. I'm like, <laughs> Please, 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 Someone obviously knows me. I honestly thought that he was going to kill me because he had all his weight on the back of my neck right here. Chance James Finley Wilkins, also known as Cyrax and born as Patrick Arnson, is notorious for his disturbing online presence as the Goblin of Akron, Ohio. This 32-year-old individual exhibits traits of sexual repression, living in his basement and displaying narcissistic and delusional behavior. Despite his aspirations of becoming a renowned musician, Chance's vulnerability and reprehensible actions led to his own downfall. He recorded numerous videos of himself screaming at his online harassers, inadvertently exposing his gullibility. Notorious for being a compulsive liar, mistreating his grandmother, and engaging in plagiarism, Chance's repulsive personality is only mirrored by his repugnant appearance. Almost on a daily basis, he attempts to manipulate unsuspecting individuals through insincere displays of tears and threats of unaliving himself. On their live stream, to show them what point they drove me to. Because you want to know what you do to me every day? This is what you make me want to do every day because of what you do to me. Which rarely yield any outcome. This behavior only serves to highlight his manipulative and deceitful nature. And you know what they did? They sat there and fucking laughed. Marty, do you want me to end my life? No! Do you want me to end my life? To draw a comparison, one could think of Chance as a more sinister version of Chris Chan, with heightened levels of racism, homophobia, and a greater willingness to partake in criminal activities. Despite starting his online presence in 2009, Cyrax didn't gain recognition until a year later when he embarked on his music career in 2010. Adopting the stage name DJ Shadowblade, he would record himself mumbling in front of the camera, clumsily navigating his surroundings while producing an unpleasant noise. all while proclaiming himself as the next big thing in hip-hop. I'm so sick of these mother always looking at me like they want to get a mother piece of me. Everybody always want to try to keep me from making mother history of my mother name. Here I am looking right at you. To avoid falling victim to the manipulation tactics commonly found in the music industry, Cyrax established his own record label called Killer Clown Records. However, his lack of knowledge about the workings of a record label became very evident as the CEO of Killer Clown Records proved to be incompetent and uneducated. Cyrax's ambitions extended beyond music, however, as he also considered himself a prodigious game developer and an auteur movie director. In 2014, he claimed to be working on a Resident Evil-inspired game with Call of Duty-style gameplay. However, after briefly mentioning it in a video, he never brought it up again, showcasing again his tendency towards delusion. 
Four years later, Cyrex released his debut thriller film, The Darkness, which turned out to be a tedious rather than entertaining experience, further highlighting his lack of acting and directing skills. Cyrax's initial taste of internet fame stemmed from his vlogs titled Inside the Shadows. In these videos, he would rant incoherently into the camera, particularly expressing his disdain for juggalos and the associated rules. Although these videos gained popularity, it was likely due to people viewing Cyrax as an eccentric internet oddity rather than a discerning critic of clown-themed rappers. Shortly after, he uploaded a room tour video, revealing that he resided in the basement, a fact that surprised no one. Meanwhile, Cyrax had been submitting applications to legitimate music labels, eventually leading to his signing with Eric Scrubolo, who took pity on the peculiar individual. However, this decision proved to be a mistake, as Cyrax promptly plagiarized Eric's music passing it off as his own, and abandoning his DJ Shadowblade persona, adopting the name Cyrax instead. Chance was quickly noticed by the trolls, who exploited his delusions of grandeur to deceive him into signing fake music deals. This played into his fantasy that his music was gaining popularity. One particularly notable troll, known as Music Biz Marty, created a fake persona and was among the first to trick Chance with false offers and praise. Marty even tempted Chance to sign with his record label, Ram Ranch Records. All of y'all bitches want to step to the best. You're looking at him, boys. You're looking at the new hottest artist on the motherfucking scene. Eventually, Marty managed to gain Chance's trust, leading him to reveal all his shameful secrets and insecurities, which Marty later leaked, causing Chance to become extremely paranoid. However, despite this paranoia, Chance continued to talk about himself, seemingly relishing in the attention he received. It is evident that Chance is a blatant plagiarist, shamelessly stealing art and music from platforms like DeviantArt and SoundCloud. He makes minimal edits, passing off the stolen content as his own, and even attempts to sell it. Notably, he doesn't bother to create original cover art or adapt the plagiarized art to his own style. On one occasion, a German musician called him out on YouTube, requesting proper credit for his work. As expected, Cyrax responded with complaints, anger, and rants. Cyrax adamantly refuses to seek employment, despite never having held a job before. He believes that doing so would detract from his career, citing Daniel Radcliffe as an example. However, it is important to note that Daniel began his career at the age of 11, whereas Cyrax is in his 30s. Instead, he relies on his grandmother Sally for financial support taking advantage of her SSI checks by receiving an allowance in exchange for minimal chores. Throughout his decade-long music career, Cyrex has only earned a total of, at most, $6. Chance's initial romantic relationship was with a woman named Abby. In fact, Abby was his first girlfriend, but this relationship was primarily conducted through FaceTime. Unfortunately, there is very limited information available about these interactions, but some photographs depict her as being significantly overweight and even having a prosthetic hand due to a previous attempt involving a train. Their relationship, however, came to an end when Chance's Facebook account was hacked, exposing his infidelity. 
I know I haven't posted on this channel in the last six months. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because I've been going through quite a bit. Um, as some of you may or may not know, me and Abby have split up. Um, you know, we're no longer together. Another woman named Heather even left her partner and children to be with Chance. Heather and Chance spent a considerable amount of time together, with her presence being evident in many of his videos. Following Heather's departure, Chance expressed his anger and heartbreak through multiple videos, accusing her of being a malicious individual who only dated him to emotionally harm him. In reality, Chance had been given an opportunity, but he failed to make the most of it much like his unsuccessful record label deals and numerous chances for redemption with his music. However, this was just the beginning of Chance's troubles. Toward the end of 2020 and into 2021, a former moderator named Masshole Report turned against him, posing as an underage girl, Cyrax, Chance engaged in inappropriate behavior by sending explicit images of himself even after being informed of this girl's age. Once the information came to light, Chance became the target of even more trolling. Additional girls came forward, revealing that Chance had sent them explicit material while they were underage. It seems that Chance has a pattern when it comes to his choices in relationships, or at least the attempt thereof. Chance is seen often frequenting locations where children gather, such as Pokemon Go get-togethers, and with the intention of grooming them. At least, that's what we've seen in the past. Repeatedly, he has fallen victim to individuals who have explicitly stated their underage status, and this has fueled his anger when they come forward about their encounters with him. In fact, this particular aspect has played a significant role into his descent into a state of disgrace. It is important to note that his reprehensible actions are epitomized by his repulsive behavior, which far surpasses even the grotesque nature of Chris Chan's actions. So if you guys would like to add me, comment your tag on Pokemon Go and I will add you. And uh, yeah, man. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. In addition to his other abhorrent habits, Cyrex has a tendency to send unsolicited, explicit images of his genitalia, even in response to innocent attempts to establish a relationship. It doesn't even know that it's not showing up. It, like it. Hey. Crap. Burger fact. You little bitch. Forty-three. Forty-three. That's what you are. <laughs> How do you like that, faggot? Listen to this. Listen to this. You can hear him masturbating. You've seen him masturbating, but he's masturbating to you. Marty. Hey, Marty. Suck my nib. Suck my dick, nib. <laughs> Another disturbing incident involves him inserting a stylus into his rectum and subsequently licking the contaminated object during a live stream. During his time in high school, Chance committed the heinous act of assaulting a visually impaired student named Billy Seiler, resulting in his expulsion from Akron East High School. The reason behind his exclusion from the offender registry remain a mystery to this day. On February 14th, 2012, Chance was arrested for strangling his grandmother, leading to his mandatory participation in counseling, a much needed effort. Unfortunately, this intervention has proven ineffective in curbing his volatile, aggressive, and offensive behavior. Shut your fucking mouth! Hey Marty! You need to back off! You're a narcissistic psychopath that needs to fuck off! This heinous act that Chance committed in 2012 upon his grandmother, the woman who had cared for him throughout his entire life, this act was supposedly driven solely by an impulsive decision he made after she informed him that he couldn't travel all the way to Kansas to meet some fictional girl. 
Surprisingly, the state decided to drop the charges against Chance due to his mental limitations. Despite the fact that Sally and the state could have pursued legal action against him, Sally chose to show compassion yet again and continue looking after him. Unfortunately, this was not the last time he engaged in such behavior. It's very clear that he does not deserve her level of kindness. Sally, who is an individual from a lower socioeconomic background, required constant protection and care. Initially, her late uncle Billy fulfilled this role, as he was the one who had alerted the authorities during the incident in 2012 between her and Chance. However, after Billy's passing, Cyrex took advantage of the situation to assert his dominance over Sally. Following this, Ed stepped in as a new guardian, and Cyrax continued to subject both Sally and Ed to domestic violence. This reached a point where they had to physically distance themselves from him within the same household in order to avoid his aggressive physical altercations and loud arguments. In addition to his unconventional sexual preferences and inappropriate behavior towards minors, Cyrax is notorious for his explosive outbursts of anger. It seems that whenever he participates in a live stream, he quickly loses control and becomes enraged. Do you want to get dangerous, Marty? We can get dangerous, bitch. Because the next... I guarantee you, Marty, and this is for you too, Schmeckle. The next bullet in your head, bitch. Cyrex often claims that the trolls are targeting not only him, but also his family and friends. Although, in reality, they're primarily focused on him alone. Whenever people discuss him, particularly when they reveal the truth about him, he resorts to yelling over them in an attempt to drown out their words. Now, if this fails to silence them, he goes to extreme measures such as exposing himself on stream in an effort to have these streams taken down and those individuals banned. Right? Marty, by the way, so... So, oh my god, dude. In one incident, Cyrax's rage consumed him to such an extent that one of his livestream trolls named Schmeckelcat offered him a bet of a hundred dollars not to lose his temper for a day, but he immediately failed to control his anger. Furthermore, he's been known to throw objects in fits of rage, resulting in damage to property. Despite his belief that he possesses the strength to break someone in half like a twig, it's important to note that Chance stands at a height of only 4 foot 9 and lacks the physical strength to back up his claims. In reality, he is the one who is vulnerable and easily overpowered. Moreover, Cyrax often provokes individuals to come to his residence and engage in physical confrontation with him, challenging them to prove their bravery. However, it's ironic that he is the one who ends up hiding in his attic like a cowardly goblin, fully aware that he would face severe consequences if he were to engage in such fights. Additionally, Chance has repeatedly made threats to harm his trolls, specifically targeting individuals such as Masshole Report and Music Biz Marty. It appears to me that we have some issues. So trust me, Marty, I'm the last motherfucker that you want showing up at your doorstep. Same with you, Schmeckle Cat. I'm the last dude that you want to have showing up at your fucking door. What you've done... It's far beyond illegal. However, his lack of courage, inability to fight, and poor driving skills prevent him from carrying out any of these threats. In summary, his grandmother has incurred a total of over a thousand dollars in repair expenses due to these episodes of anger, along with numerous visits from the police. The situation has escalated to the point where police are familiar with him by name and choose to disregard any calls from the Wilkins residence. This puts Sally in danger of being targeted by Chance himself. Well, police won't even respond. The police are aware that the Goblin's complaints about his online harassers are baseless and insignificant. 
you don't have to get on your computer. You don't have to be a part of YouTube. You don't have to be on Facebook. You don't have to be on Instagram. You don't have to do any of those things. People do. And then they are surprised with the things that happen. You have to know when to walk away, right? Cyrex has resided with his grandmother Sally for the majority of his life, and the reasons behind this arrangement are very evident. Unfortunately, Chance's father has been incarcerated since 1994, and his mother, who faced mental challenges of her own, was entirely unable to provide the proper care for him. Despite having other siblings, one of whom is his older sibling, born 26 weeks prior to him, have chosen not to establish any connection with him whatsoever. Chance's father, Rupal Mark Smith, was convicted as a sex offender and served a 20-year sentence for the assault of a 14-year-old girl on a bike path when he was 25. Despite his friends recognizing him as the perpetrator from an artist's sketch, he adamantly denied his involvement. After completing his sentence, he relocated to Anchorage, Alaska and secured new employment. It appeared he had moved on from his past. However, the Trolls Marty and Schmeckel's investigation led them to discover that he was still engaging in inappropriate behavior, adding one more target on top of Chance to their list. Now they found evidence of him posting images of underage boys dressed in drag on Pinterest, and even going as far as to claim they were, quote, easy to convince, end quote. Once his employer became aware of these actions, Chance's father was swiftly terminated. He attempted to justify these actions during a live stream, claiming it was for trans kid awareness, due to an alleged incident of his coworker being fired for transphobia. Despite his denials, Chance's father eventually admitted to the assault of the 14-year-old girl after providing a series of excuses. Shockingly though, he remains entirely unapologetic for his actions, citing his probation and supposed progress in mental rehabilitation. Cyrax's mother Connie also faced significant challenges in her life. According to Chance, her cognitive abilities were impaired due to a tragic accident involving her parents while she was still in her mother's womb. As a result, she was diagnosed as having severe cognitive limitations, and due to her condition, she was unable to care for Chance, as it took her three years just to learn how to drive a car. Tragically, she accidentally caused a fire that engulfed her entire house while attempting to cook on the stove resulting in her untimely demise at only 36 years old. Additionally, it's worth noting that her consumption of alcohol during pregnancy may have contributed to Chance's unique circumstances. Chance's grandfather, William, also had a very disturbing past. He married his grandma Sally Lou Arnson when she was just 14 years old and he was 25. Sally became a mother at the age of 18, having four children since the age of 14. After her final child, she filed for divorce, but unfortunately, her husband gained custody of the children. Despite this, the children remained more loyal to their mother than their father, and the grandfather went on to have four more children after his marriage to Sally ended. The extended family of Chance is well aware of his grandfather's reputation and rightfully terrified of being associated with him. They want nothing to do with him and they see his career as nothing short of delusional. Furthermore, they have no intention of taking him in once his grandmother does pass away, and it's clear to them how unfortunate this situation will ultimately unfold. In June of 2022, Cyrax came up with a brilliant idea to stream on Twitch in an attempt to escape from trolls and pursue his own interests while also making some money. However, similar to his YouTube channel, Cyrax continued to sing and dance to the same old songs and plagiarized routines. While YouTube tolerates his inappropriate behavior, Twitch has stricter policies and will not let him get away with any misconduct. Not surprisingly, Cyrax couldn't control his racist and homophobic remarks which he started uttering shortly after joining Twitch. Consequently, the platform imposed a 7-day suspension on him initially. 
Instead of reflecting on his actions and patiently waiting for the suspension to end so he can potentially appeal it, he decides that he's going to change his VPN and create a brand new Twitch account, thinking that this would definitely get around their barriers. This led to Twitch permanently banning both the new account and his original one for attempting to ban evade. Naturally, Cyrax chose to blame the trolls for all of this. Once again, it's just another repetitive cycle of excuses and denials. Prior to this ban, Cyrax was able to generate approximately $90 in ad revenue, surpassing the meager amount that he typically earns in a span of 10 years. However, since Twitch only initiates payments once the user reaches a minimum of $100 in ad revenue, Cyrax was unable to receive that desirable sum of money upon his banning. In December of 2022, only a few months later, Chance made not one, but two attempts to make a triumphant return to Twitch. Unfortunately, the persistent trolls managed to swiftly bring down his streams once again, and as anticipated, Chance expressed his intense frustration towards these trolls. On February 24th of 2023, Cyrax made yet another endeavor to reclaim his presence on the streaming platform. Oh god. Here we fucking go, dude. Oh my god. Why do I even bother with your fucking ass, bro? Why do I even fucking bother with your f ass glory hole? Oh my god, dude, you're such a fucking idiot. However, a troll named William Glory Hole ensured that his newly created Twitch account was promptly terminated within a mere day of its establishment. Now this return came shortly after a major incident in Cyrax's life. On November 4th, 2022, Cyrax claimed that he was targeted with a gunshot while lying on his mattress. And then I proceeded out of pure self-defense for my family. Gave anyone that wanted to do harm to me and my family a very fair warning, stating that if you were to show up to my house uninvited with the intent to do harm to my family that I would not hesitate to do what I must to defend my family. Believing that someone had intentionally fired a gun towards his residence, demonstrating his intellectual prowess, Cyrax promptly responded by issuing legal and personal threats to the presumed shooter along with uttering some nonsensical statements and going on rants that had nothing to do with the incident. Despite the alleged presence of a bullet hole, the bullet itself was never actually discovered. Speculation has arisen suggesting that the sound resembling a gunshot was most likely a rat trap in his room that coincidentally activated while Cyrax was live on YouTube. The initial significant occurrence in 2023 involved the passing of one named Greiker, who frequently collaborated with the troll William Gloryhole and consistently provoked Cyrax in the preceding months. However, due to Greiker's lack of activity in January of 2023, Cyrax automatically assumed that Greiker had taken his own life. Despite Cyrax's anger and threats towards Greiker, and the fact that their relationship was far from what most would consider a friendship, Chance still felt compelled to upload a video in which he expressed his mourning and grief for Greiker's, and I quote, death from trolling, while also spouting more self-important nonsense about mental health, despite repeatedly encouraging his trolls to harm themselves. However, one month later in February of 2023, Greiker livestreamed on YouTube, revealing that his death had been entirely a hoax. It seems that Chance failed to realize that Greiker was still alive. Once again, Chance demonstrates his lack of intelligence by falling for a deceptive offer of game mods and Netflix passwords for his Xbox One. 
Promptly after this occurrence, Chance once again demonstrates his lack of intelligence by falling for a troll. Now despite the obvious warning signs, Cyrax would willingly accept a USB stick that supposedly contains the promised content of game mods, Netflix passwords, and more. Unbeknownst to him, the USB was actually a destructive device capable of frying the internal components of his Xbox with a staggering 10 gigawatts of power. Without any hesitation, Cyrax inserts the USB only to discover that his Xbox now refuses to turn on. In an attempt to fix the issue, he troubleshoots the console during one of his live streams. To his surprise, one named Liquid Chris, who had previously retired, returns to inform Cyrax and his trolling companion that MF Goon had intercepted the package containing the mods and the true USB stick. The one I fucking sent? The one that has my info right. on it? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I have it all. Dude, they're, dude, what? they're fucking, dude. They're fucked with you, dude. There's no way. Cyrax, we just bricked your Xbox. No, I fucking had mods loaded. Those were the ones... What he just no. called him was a 10 gigawatt kill stick that disrupts any technology plugged into it. Mr. Cyrax, if you don't believe us, try plugging it in somewhere else. They just, they just fucking sent me my address. It's done. We know where you are. We have oh my god. Ah, we have oh everything. Oh my god. We're in your Facebook. Cyrax, this is what uh, happened. Yeah. You're going to the paddle, you motherfucker. This is what happened. You nigger boy. Oh I my god. Like this, bro. No, here's what's gonna Cyrax. happen, Cyrax. Here's what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna. Realizing that he has essentially just rendered his own Xbox completely useless, Cyrax proceeds to rant, whine, complain, and scream at the trolls on his livestream. Furthermore, these trolls have also managed to gain access to his Facebook account, uncovering Cyrax's attempt to persuade his friend's wife to cheat on him. The fact that Chance believes any woman would leave her husband for him is one of the most significant aspects of this situation. Cyrax would eventually and reluctantly join forces with Music Biz Marty once more to confront the buddy trolls, including MF Goon, Liquid Chris, and many others. He still believed that Music Biz Marty could be on his side. However, he would persistently fabricate falsehoods about the entire situation and try to divert attention away from the truth, showcasing his pathological lying tendencies. This seemingly persuasive friendship, though, would only endure for a brief period as Cyrax would once again explode in anger towards Marty randomly. What you fail to realize, Marty, is one simple thing. Without me, you would be nothing. This time, however, it stemmed from Marty's alleged attempt to have Cyrax arrested for supposedly violating Ohio State law by attaching himself to a train. It is worth noting that this offense is, in Ohio law, classified as a first-degree misdemeanor carrying a penalty of a $1,000 fine. Despite the fact that Cyrax could always sell his unused $400 Apple Watch to purchase a new Xbox of his own, he would continue to threaten Marty. This time, on a live stream, he would threaten Marty with a hammer in a video due to Marty quote-unquote intercepting any package and asserting his Viking ancestry. Today we are talking about the ancestors of Cyrax Chance Wilkins. They were very famous and they were freaks just like him. In fact, he is the spitting image of his ancestors. After spending a few more days in shock and with no Xbox, Chance attempted to expose Marty's personal information online, but failed to trick him into clicking on an IP grabber hidden in a link. Realizing that Marty was not as foolish as he initially believed, and considering Cyrax's desperation at this point, now despite his previous claim of not dancing again until December, Chance reluctantly agreed to dance on stream for Marty to get his Xbox. 
Despite obeying Marty, Cyrax still did not receive the Xbox and, as expected, unleashed his anger once again. Despite Marty's strong refusal to provide Cyrax with a new Xbox, everything appeared to be going smoothly until a mischievous friend named Michael Hacking started sending money to Chance. Regrettably, this meant that Cyrax could once again engage in inappropriate behavior with minors on Fortnite. The original reason his Xbox was bricked. Prior to the main event, Marty had issued a challenge to Cyrax for an e-racing match, as he aimed to undermine Cyrax's status as the quote, Drift King of Akron. Now Marty initiated this challenge while playing F1 2020, but Cyrax consistently refused any invitation to race. Chance was well aware that if Marty emerged victorious, it would shatter his illusion of being a professional e-racer. In simpler terms, Cyrax displayed cowardice while Marty emerged as the new Drift King. Additionally, Marty played a game named JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R to further taunt Chance, who also happened to be a weeb. Marty ultimately triumphed over Chance in the tournament. Meanwhile, during this period, an unidentified individual sent a threatening letter containing a suspicious substance to Cyrax's address. Upon opening the package, Sally immediately contacted the Akron PD, which led to a hazmat incident at the Wilkins home. Surprisingly, Chance remained oblivious to all of these events as he slept through it all. Considering that Cyrax refused to participate in a fictional Formula One racing match, Marty made the decision to book an Airbnb in Akron, Ohio on March 1st, 2023. This choice came after enduring years of Cyrax's anger and threats, as well as Cyrax backing out of two previous confrontations initiated by Marty on the street and Cyrax's warnings for Marty to stay away from Ohio. Given the past outcomes, it is widely expected that Cyrax would once again retreat to the attic or his basement. However, on the rainy evening of March 3rd, 2023, Cyrax surprisingly showed up. Nevertheless, due to Marty's larger stature compared to Cyrax's height, it came as no surprise that Marty easily defeated Chance, reducing yeah, him like to a whimpering individual begging for Marty's mercy. One would assume that after receiving two black eyes and a broken nose, Cyrax would learn a valuable lesson. However, considering we are discussing Cyrax, it is evident that he did not. Immediately after being thoroughly beaten, Cyrax once again threatened legal action against Marty, this time claiming assault. Despite the fact that Cyrax charged at Marty with a hammer, giving Marty the legal right to defend himself, under Ohio's Stand Your Ground law. Despite the fact that Cyrax and his friend with benefits Michael were still on good terms during this period and had plans to take Marty to court, Cyrax would actually confront Michael for what he perceived as betraying him by quote, turning his back on him, acting like a coward, and submitting to Marty. There have been speculations that Marty may have actually made Michael an offer he couldn't refuse, leading to this supposed betrayal of Cyrax. However, the exact circumstances surrounding Michael's change of allegiance remain unclear. Remember, Michael is the one that actually provided Chance with a brand new Xbox after the initial confrontation with Marty. Nevertheless, this situation provided amusement for everyone except for Chance, as he proceeded to create two videos calling out Michael hacking, pretending to be tough, despite having just been beaten by Marty. In an unforeseen twist of events, Cyrax's stepfather and Sally's partner, Ed, whose real name is Roy Vaughn, would emerge as a hero on March 7th. Considering that Cyrax had previously exploited Ed's depression and attempts to unalive himself to elicit sympathy, one might assume that Chance would seize this opportunity to indulge in self-pity, similar to Boogie2988. However, at present, Chance is still complaining about Marty quote-unquote assaulting him while Marty organized a heartfelt candlelight vigil for Ed the following day. 
Now of course, it turned out that this entire incident and vigil was merely a hoax designed to provoke Chance, and judging by the subsequent videos he made in response to this Ed news, it was quite effective. On the subsequent night, Cyrax would once again unleash his anger towards Marty and attempt to debunk the various conspiracy theories circulating about Ed's mysterious demise. Two weeks following the epic Battle of the Century, Cyrax issued another challenge to the renowned Drift King for a race on Forza, aiming to finally reclaim his crown. So Marty here, I've seen you been running your mouth sparking and saying that you're the DK, you're the king of Akron, you're this, you're that, but there's one person you ain't ever beat in a real race, and that's me. You're looking at the head honcho around here, the head DK, the guy that everybody respects. We're gonna do something about that. Since you're wanting to battle me so bad, I'll give you that opportunity. The initial race concluded with Cyrax abruptly quitting in a fit of rage, resulting in Marty being declared the victor. However, the second race witnessed the Goblin emerging triumphant. It is worth noting that Marty generously granted him a 5 second head start, fully aware of his lackluster driving abilities. Nevertheless, Marty soon uncovered Cyrax's utilization of assistance to gain an unfair advantage throughout the match. In simpler terms, Chance resorted to cheating. Despite Marty's objections regarding Cyrax's unjust victory, he shamelessly boasted about reclaiming the title of Drift King. Yet even if the Goblin had won fairly, the score remained tied at 1-1, necessitating a tiebreaker. Regrettably, Chance's inflated ego prevented him from accepting such a proposition, clearly demonstrating his perpetual immaturity and entitlement. He always desires to have it all, and will manipulate any situation to achieve his selfish desires. Several days later, Cyrax engaged in a heated argument with Marty once again, ultimately leading to Sally taking measures into her own hands and disconnecting the internet. This occurred not once, but twice, and it took a mere three months to reach this breaking point. The following day, Cyrax attempted to prove his superiority in drifting skills to Marty by solely focusing on drifting in Forza, frequently resulting in crashes and even claimed that spinning out constituted a 360 degree turn. This is breaking tradition, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna throw it down during the daytime just to make it easier. This was the Forza Drift King era of chance, and it provided a ton of golden content. By the conclusion of 2023, Sally, who had grown tired of Cyrax's incessant and immature shouting matches, as well as all the negative attention he received after his altercation with Marty, decided to restrict his internet access significantly and potentially even ground him from it. However, instead of reflecting on his behavior and striving to improve, Chance has chosen to utilize his time by engaging in a campaign against the trolls, mass reporting YouTube channels that host his content for alleged harassment and cyberbullying. Much like this video here, I'm sure I'll be hearing from you Chance. He seems determined to exploit community guidelines in an attempt to silence his critics, displaying his true nature as a contemptible individual. The most significant consequence of this period was the termination of a Cyrax Torian known as 283 Auditorium, which housed numerous older videos of chances, some of which are now considered lost media. In one of his conversations with Cyrax video game, Chance admitted to flagging other people's channels and even enlisting the help of quote unquote white knights to do so. His streak of terminations continued, resulting in the removal of Marty Williams and the emerging trolls channels. Cyrax would eventually surprise everyone by issuing an apology to Marty, William, Massel Reports, and the other trolls after being grounded by his grandmother for a few days. 
However, despite claiming it was an apology video, he made a feeble attempt to avoid taking responsibility. For instance, he denied knowing why William was angry at Chance, even though Chance had threatened to harm William's children and had made threats against William and Masshole during a confrontation on October 4th, 2022, a year prior. Unsurprisingly, nobody believed his insincere apology, as YouTube apology videos have never been successful in the past. As a result of this video, Chance decided to retreat to Kick over Twitch and YouTube, a platform that is more lenient towards channels. Cyrax's retreat to Kick, however, was short-lived, as the trolls discovered his account and targeted it. On April 22, 2023, Cyrax denounced on his old retreat Facebook page that he had left Kick due to the trolls invading his account. He also mentioned considering a return to YouTube to rebuild his business. With his ongoing war against the trolls, and his confession to Cyrax video games on YouTube that he would copyright strike videos discussing him, much like this one, it is clear that he plans to escalate the conflict. Later, in May, a troll exposed that Cyrax had created not one but two new YouTube channels named Online Mental Help and Stunt Writer Republic. The former was made the day after his apology video, indicating that Cyrax never truly left YouTube, but was attempting to evade the trolls. However, the trolls always managed to find their way. And finally, at the end of May, Cyrax officially, publicly returned to YouTube with his new channel for music, KOA Productions. On June 25th, 2023, tensions reached a boiling point when Cyrax hurled a baseball bat at a group of protesters who were demonstrating outside his house, accusing him of pedophilia. This action led to the protesters contacting the authorities, ultimately resulting in Cyrax's arrest. Meanwhile, Ed, another individual involved in his tumultuous situation, unleashed his own outburst of anger. Around this time, the troll William Gloryhole exposed Cyrax for violating a protection order filed by Candle Smith, who had been subjected to his relentless harassment after she bravely spoke out against him, revealing his true nature as a degenerate. Less than 24 hours later, Sally came to Cyrax's aid by posting bail, an amount of $304. At this point, Sally's actions could be described as enabling as she continued to support him despite his troubling behavior. The following month of July passed uneventfully, but with Cyrax following his predictable pattern of creating new content, targeting insignificant individuals, deleting his channels, and repeating the cycle. On October 20th, Cyrax's previous place of refuge, Kick, finally took action and banned him. This decision was made due to his repeated attempts to evade bans on Twitch, which were brought to Kick's attention by the vigilant trolls. As a result, his retreat to Kick since April 2023 finally came to an end. With no other safe havens except for Facebook, Chance's only viable option to generate income was through YouTube, a platform he had sworn to never return to. This effectively eliminates any other means for him to make money, aside from receiving donations from enablers and his buddy trolls. However, on October 23rd, Cyrax managed to regain access to his Kick account. Unfortunately, Due to his foolish actions, he would once again lose that account shortly after, and hopefully permanently, after threatening his ex-father following his disownment. This occurred when Marty and Masshole Reports interviewed the original Wilkins family, and Cyrax totally embarrassed himself. A month later, on November 22nd, Cyrax demanded that all of his buddy trolls and white knights come to his defense and urged them to quote, man up, threatening to delete his kick account if they didn't. Now remember, his kick account had already been banned. Despite this ultimatum, none of them budged, and shortly after, it appeared that his kick account had been deleted, presumably by him. However, it did end up resurfacing, only to be banned yet again in the beginning of December. 
Ultimately, his kick channel has never been recreated again. Cyrax, on December 8, 2023, conceived a remarkable plan to become a VTuber, employing a subpar Catboy VTuber avatar and an inadequate voice changer, Cyrax naively thought he could deceive the trolls. However, these trolls astutely discerned that his recent endeavor was an escalation in his attempt to exploit miners, as he pretended to be somewhat popular among them. Once exposed, Cyrax promptly removed his VTuber videos, albeit after the trolls had already archived them. And that is where we receive much of the content for today's video. That is where we leave Cyrax for now, as 2024 is just warming up, and I hope to see you on the next time we catch up with what's going on in the man from Akron, Ohio's head.